Today I want to talk openly and honestly about something that we are failing at in this country, and that's our health. As a young child, I'm born and raised in Macon, Georgia. Um, my parents were both raised on a farm, and what we learned was good food, uh, soul food. That's the thing that we learned to eat, the collard greens, the cornbread, the macaroni and cheese, and that's what we grew up eating. I've always had a problem with balancing, you know, balancing life with working out, you know, exercising, eating healthy, you know, and I can do it for, you know, spurts of time, and then it kind of gets boring and I fall back into a, a you know, unhealthy lifestyle. The sobering truth is that we are an obese nation and getting fatter and fatter every year. How much did you weigh? Uh, 450 pounds at the time. Certain things are embarrassing for me to admit even out loud to myself. So if I say 383, for, for me to hear the words coming out of my mouth, it's not only surreal, it's painful. By the end of the hour, I want to challenge the way we think about our health. It's not always what you're eating, it might just be what's eating at you. We have a dysfunctional relationship with food. Okay. Now, as a country and certainly as a community. Sometimes I think you just have to simplify things. Like he just simply said, I'm gonna get up and walk. I never thought about doing it. It was always like, oh, I gotta go to the gym. There's nothing wrong with soul food. As a matter of fact, it can save your life, but it's how we prepare it. We have to prepare our foods in a way that work for us rather than against us. If you want McDonald's that bad, walk there, walk back, and then sit down and, ah, and enjoy it all you want. But other than that, you can put some work into it. You can lose the weight, but the question is, will you be able to keep it off? How much has that shut you in and shut you off from everything going on around you? I think that it shut me off not from experiencing things because I still go to the movie theaters. I think it shut me off from allowing people in. Okay. Because someone new whose average size doesn't know or even think about Right. the size of the seats at the movie theater. Right. And the conversation in itself can be embarrassing. Right. Um, and it can be a lot of work to get people acclimated because, in effect, I'm handicapped, right? Mm -hmm. And so what... It's okay. Take your time. So you really have to make all the same arrangements. For my father, who's a quadriplegic, a lot of the arrangements that I make for him, I have to also make for myself. And so explaining that to people or inviting someone new in your space, you were afraid of the rejection, um, the judgment, um, and being denied even an opportunity professional. You're right. If you ever tell someone, you know, if you send for me to be your speaker at your conference, you have to buy two plane tickets because that's what it's going to take to get me there. You can be denied in so many ways because of the obesity. I understand that. I understand that. I, I know this is tough. It is. I know it's tough. But it's important. It is. Because when you equate yourself with your father, there is one distinct difference. He can't grow legs and arms. He can't change. But you can change this. You, you are blessed with an opportunity to go through a transformation that he doesn't have. And so this is something that is fixable for you. I want to meet the Jay you would be if you were not in this position. a really amazing, insightful experience. Uh, Bishop James, the way that he can really have insights into things without you actually speaking it. It's like there was this spiritual connection where he actually tapped into my soul a little bit in places that I generally just don't allow people to go. And so that was really a heart-to-heart -heart, um, experience for me today. I think it was a conversation with my, my lifestyle coach, Akila Richards. Uh, she told me basically that I was being a hypocrite. I write about emotional nudity, really standing in your journey, really living and, and, and dealing with your issues head on. And this was the one thing that I really wasn't dealing with head on. And, and, and if, I'm not, if, I'm in, if I'm nothing, I'm honest. 
And so to really be honest with myself about this particular issue and the fact that I wasn't being open about this part of my walk, I was very guarded and protective of myself when it came to this particular subject. And so I really had to open up just so that I could live my own personal truth. You'll be surprised as to how many people step forward. There's definitely going to be the naysayers and the people that, that, that judge you and that are turned away. But those were people that you were never in a million years going to win over in the first place. So I think that you have to really be open. You'll find support in the most unlikely places. And what you'll find is that you end up with this not only enormous weight lifted because now you're honest and you're open. Now you have people that have your back. And that's an amazing thing.